Zotero is so good at capturing things. You might find that just after a few minutes you have 15 uh, or 50 sources and you're feeling a little lost. The good news is that Zotero is also a very powerful tool for organizing those sources. And that's what we're going to look at in these next two videos. In this first video, we're going to look at how Zotero naturally breaks items down into categories like title, author, date of publication, and then we'll look at how you can use tags to make your own finer distinctions between items. You can see that I have Zotero open to the full window view, and I'd like to start this video by looking at how Zotero inherently organizes the items that you brought into the library. First, on the left, we have the pane with all of the collections. Also, if I move my mouse down here to the bottom of the screen and click on this little dot, I also have all of the tags that are in my Zotero library, and we'll go over that a little bit later in the video. For now, I'm going to close it. And I'm also going to go back up and select our inbox, which is the sources we've been working with in this series of videos. In the middle pane, I have all the items that are in a given collection. So in this case, I've selected the inbox, and these are all the items I've collected in my inbox. Now remember that each item has two parts. First, you have the parent item, and then if you click on the little triangle next to it, you have all the child items associated with that parent item. Usually, those will either be website snapshots, or PDFs, or notes, which we'll talk about in a later video. So again, remember we have the parent item, and all of the children items. Finally, on the right, we have the info pane. And this gives us all of the information associated with a particular item. So here I've selected gender and the metaphorics of translation. And I have everything, uh, all the information I could need for this item, from the author to the journal to when it was published. So if we were to work backwards for just a second, in the info pane, I have all the information for the item I've selected in the middle pane. And in the middle pane, I have all the items that are collected in the collection, in the collections pane. Now let's focus for a minute on the center pane. I'm going to zoom in, and you can see that along the top of the middle pane, there are several column headings. Here I have title, creator, and date. And the first thing you should know is that you can always organize the items in this list by clicking on title, it'll organize them alphabetically by title, by creator, alphabetically by creator, or date, ascending or descending in terms of date. Now if I click on this item right here, I can also see that I can add other categories, or rather other columns. So for example, if I'm interested in publisher, I can click here, and it adds that information to the center pane, and I can organize everything using that information. I'll actually remove it here. One menu item that people often like to have is attachments. And you can see that everything with a blue dot here signals to me that I already have a PDF or a snapshot associated with a, a given parent item. So the first step in organizing your sources with Zotero might be as simple as just alphabetizing them by title, creator, or date. Next, I want to focus on the information pane. You can see here that I have info selected, but what I want you to do is I want you to click on tags. And I can see that for this article, there are no tags associated with it. Now, tags are simply a category in which you want to situate a given item. And that category can be an academic subject, a country, a time period, anything really. Let's take the example of translating gender. Again, I can see that there are no tags associated with it, so I'm going to add a few. The first is going to be translation. And you can see that Zotero already has this tag in its library, so it's going to show it to me, and I can just hit Enter. I'll hit Enter again. I also know that this has to do with gender, so I'll find gender and select that. I also know that this particular article has to do with Egypt, so I will select that as well. I also know that the author in this article works with uh, the theories of Bourdieu, so I'll enter that too. 
And so now I have this article filed into four different categories, two of which are academic subjects, one country, and then one theorist. So once you've captured an item into your inbox, you've read it, you decided that you want to keep it, so you add some tags to it, and then you file it away. You can then use the tag structure that you've created to find that source again. Let me give you an example. The first thing I'm going to do is instead of inbox, I'm going to click on my library. And so here I have every single source in my Zotero library, which is quite a few. I'm then going to click down here so I can open up the tag prompt. I'll make it a little bigger so you can see it. And I'm going to show you how you can use the tag structure to quickly find items. Let's say, for example, that I'm working on a project on the country of Venezuela. Well, here I have a tag that I've created called to buy, and I use that for sources that I need to track down, whether by buying them or finding them in the library. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it, and then Zotero is going to show me everything in my library that has that tag. And then here in the tag box, it's going to show me every other tag that these items have. So from there, I'm going to see, up oh, here's Venezuela. I'll click on it. And I can see that there is only one source on Venezuela that I still need to buy. And it's called La Telenovela in Venezuela. And I can track it down very easily because here I have a link to Google Books where I can find all of the uh, information. So let's clear the search so I can show you what else you can do with tags. Click here on Actions and then Deselect All. Another thing you can do is uh, to help you organize tags is to use shortcuts and add colors. For instance, here I am back on my to buy tag. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say assign color. Now Zotero lets me decide what color I want to use for this tag. I like orange and then the position I want to assign to this tag. And uh, let me show you what that means. I'm going to set the color. and You can see up here to buy has changed. And if I click on it, here's everything I need to buy. And the color is marked right here in the uh, item list. Now, I'm going to go back to my inbox. And from now on, now that I've assigned it a color and a number, every time I hit the number one, like this, it will add that tag to it. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you about tags, and it has to do with the settings for Zotero. So let's go over here to the gear. Let's click Preferences. Make sure you're in the general pane. And down here you can see that there is an option which allows you to automatically add tags that you find in online catalogs or databases. And what this means is that if you are in the uh, TII library catalog, for instance, and there are certain tags or subjects associated with an item, Zotero will automatically import that and add those tags to that item in your library. My advice is to make sure that this is not selected. And the reason for this is that different databases use slightly different tags. And what that means is that instead of having one tag for Venezuela, you might have three. One that has a capital V, one that has a lowercase v, one that has Venezuela, comma, countries. And I think it's a good idea, generally, for you to just generate all of these tags on your own and create your own system because in the end, the research process is a personal one. So you need to come up with the system that works best for you. So that is it for tags.